Hi, welcome to the session. Today, we're going to talk about what's new in cloud native CI CD. I'm David Jacobs, and I'm a product manager here at Google. And I'm here with Edward Thiel, who's a software engineer, also at Google. We're going to start by talking about the importance of CI CD in a modern context, as well as challenges that you may face as you modernize your software supply chain. We'll then talk about how Software Delivery Shield, which is Google Cloud's secure software supply chain solution, can help in some of these areas. We'll cap things off with a demo to show you how all of this comes together and talk about potential next steps. It almost goes without saying, but continuous integration and continuous delivery, or CICD, are integral to modern software development. By continuously testing, integrating, and deploying changes, we can enable our teams to move faster and with confidence that we're meeting our customers' needs and expectations. In fact, it's hard to imagine some of the most successful companies and technologies operating today without some form of testing and automation. Now, of course, there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach to DevOps or CI-CD. Every organization is different, and there are several challenges that you may face as you modernize. One challenge you may face is how to balance speed, scale, and security. These are all important goals to design against, but they're all related to each other, and they can't be optimized in isolation. In fact, these goals may be in tension with each other. You may design a system that's completely scalable, for example, but it may cost you in terms of velocity. Or you may have a team that ships quickly, but doesn't take the time to secure its software. While the exact balance is something only you can decide, there are a few best practices that let you make the trade-offs easier to manage. First, let's talk about speed. Here, you're aiming to move faster as a team and organization to meet market needs but in a way that's safe and that won't cause problems down the road. How can you attain this speed? Well, before you try to move faster, it's best to define exactly what you're measuring in the first place. There are many ways you could measure velocity and the sheer number of choices can be overwhelming. The good news is you can stand on the shoulders of giants as you do this. In particular, I'd encourage you to look at research from DevOps Research and Assessment, or DORA, to learn which key metrics are associated with top performers. Once you've defined success, try to promote smaller, more frequent changes in order to stay nimble. By doing this, you can mitigate the risks and slowdowns that are associated with larger changes. And finally, it may, in some cases, be worth considering managed services to maximize the speed of your team. Managed services may reduce the burden of infrastructure management and security for your team and instead let you focus on your differentiated value and goals. Next, let's talk about scale. A lot can be said about scale, but a key thing that I want to mention today is that scale doesn't have to be daunting. It's okay to start small with the CICD pipeline that works for one or two projects and work your way up from there. If you hyper-optimize for scale too early in a project, you may pose an unnecessary risk to your team's velocity at a point in time where the velocity is an important factor. At the same time, there are principles you can apply early on that pay real dividends without too much cost. For example, ensuring that configuration is stored as code may be slightly more effort upfront, but it will likely mean that you don't need to rewrite any pipelines when you achieve greater scales. Related to this, it's important to choose tools and technology that evolve in a similar fashion as your needs grow in complexity. Finally, let's touch on security. Now, security is a big topic, but I do wanna cover a couple of best practices that are particularly relevant for CI/CD. First and foremost, I'd encourage you to bake security into your process and to do so early. You may want to consider potential bottlenecks and whether you can ease these by shifting left on security. This may mean that security reviews happen early or even the developers are thinking about security as they code and as they do code review. Additionally, you may decide it's important to keep a human in the loop for code changes or releases that meet a certain risk threshold. Tooling like manual approvals and promotion can help out here. You also want to plan for workload observability. 
or knowing what code is running where. One last point here is that Salsa is a standard specifically concerning the software supply chain. Not only does it describe the security you can achieve in your CI CD pipelines, but it gives you an incremental path to get there. So how can Google help you on your modernization journey? You may have heard earlier in the conference about Software Delivery Shield, Google's secure software supply chain solution. Software Delivery Shield covers many areas, and I want to talk a little bit about how it helps with CI CD. The first service I want to talk about is Cloud Build. Cloud Build is a platform for continuous integration and developer automation. That means that not only can you build and test with Cloud Build, but you can automate other tasks from source code as well. It's fully managed, so you can focus on your core competencies instead of scaling build infrastructure. Cloud Build has invested heavily in features that help you modernize your CI pipelines. Recent examples include Salsa Level 3 support, private network connectivity, and native integrations with major source code providers. Cloud Build also lets you create a pipeline with a simple build script like the one you see on the right. And as your needs evolve and become more complex, Cloud Build can handle that too. Next, Artifact Registry is a universal management layer for images, build artifacts, and application dependencies. Not only does it let you store these artifacts, but it does so with high availability. Artifact Registry supports a variety of languages and native artifact protocols. You can also scan these images and artifacts for vulnerabilities. Finally, Cloud Deploy is Google Cloud's solution for continuous delivery. It supports deployment to multiple runtimes, including GKE and Cloud Run. Like Cloud Build, Cloud Deploy is fully managed and takes the toil out of managing CI CD infrastructure. With Cloud Deploy, you can manage releases declaratively as code, you can promote releases to various environments, and you have tight control over approvals and rollbacks. You can also use Cloud Deploy to verify that releases were successful after the fact. So how does all of this come together? To answer this question, I'm going to turn it over to Edward, who will show us how to create a secure CI CD pipeline for Cloud Run using Cloud Build, Artifact Registry, and Cloud Deploy. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to walk through how we set up a fast, reliable, and secure CI CD pipeline using components from Software Delivery Shield. We will use Cloud Build for our continuous integration solution, which will create images in Artifact Registry. These will be deployed by Cloud Deploy, our continuous delivery solution, into Cloud Run. Zooming in a bit, we have Cloud Build connected to a private GitHub repository and configured to lint, build, and test our application on every merged domain. Then it will package up the application using Docker, upload it to Artifact Registry, and create a release for it in Cloud Deploy. From there, Cloud Deploy will automatically deploy the application to the staging environment and then run post deployment verification jobs, which will ensure that our application is behaving as we expect in a real production like environment. From there, we can choose to promote a successful release to production. To ensure production stability, we've configured Cloud Deploy to require approvals of the deployment by a user with the appropriate permissions before allowing it to continue. Once approved, the application will be deployed to the production Cloud Run service, where another verification job is triggered to ensure everything is working as we expect here as well. Now let's take a deeper look at our CI CD configuration. Our application uses config as code, so doing that is as simple as checking out our GitHub repository. Let's take a look at the Cloud Build configuration first, which will be triggered automatically whenever code is merged to main. Here you can see that we have three steps configured. First, we use Maven to lint, build, and test our application. Then, we use Docker to build our application container that will be deployed to Cloud Run and also to build our verification container, which is a separate container that is used to validate the deployment. Finally, we create a cloud deploy release using images that we've just created and uploaded to Artifact Registry. Also note the images field below, which ensures that build provenance and the appropriate attestations required by binary authorizations are attached to the images automatically. Now let's take a look at our cloud deploy configuration. Here you can see that we have a simple two-stage pipeline deploying to staging and production targets. You'll notice that both stages have a verification job enabled, and the production stage uses its own scaffold profile in order to account for differences in configuration between staging and production. 
look at the targets themselves. You'll see that they point to two different projects and have differing service accounts configured both for production and staging and also for the different activities that occur as part of deployment. This makes it possible to follow the principle of least privilege where each action only has permissions that it needs in order to run. Now let's take a look at the scaffold configuration. Here you can see a very simple setup that indicates that this configuration is for a cloud run target with the service definition in service.yaml by default and in service-prod when the production profile is active. Both profiles share a verification image which verifies the most recently deployed service. We also build this image as part of our CRI process. Let's quickly look at the staging service YAML which shows a simple cloud run config pointing to the image along with some scale configurations appropriate for our staging target. Now looking at production, we see that it has a different scale configuration, but also it enables binary authorization, which ensures that the application that was being deployed was built by Cloud Build. And now let's take a quick look at our verification job. This is a simple script configured to send 50 requests to the application we just deployed and verify that it meets some average latency threshold. Note that it does so using the credentials configured earlier in the Cloud Deploy YAML, as the service is not open to the general internet. Now let's see how we can make a change to the application and get it deployed to production. Here you see a simple Hello World application making a small change to the text that is returned. Note that when we did that, we also introduced a small performance regression that is very likely to make it past our CI test infrastructure, but is likely to be impactful to our users. To deploy this change, we simply commit the change and push it to our repository. And that's it. After merging the change domain, the build is created automatically and is currently running. In the interest of time, we'll fast forward builds and roll up throughout this video. Now the job is completed successfully, and here you can see it built the application using Maven, packaged and uploaded the images, and then created a cloud deploy release. Now we will see cloud deploy pick up the new release and deploy it to the first target, in this case staging. Note however that the rollout to staging fails. To see why, we can click View Rollout from the dropdown. Here we see while the deployment to the runtime was successful, the verification job failed. To understand why, we go to the logs for that event. And we can see that our performance regression is the cause. We will fix that regression, but in the meantime, we will roll back the change to staging in order to make the target healthy. Back in our editor, we will remove the code that caused the performance issue and leave the desired change intact. As before, we simply commit the change to main to trigger the flow that will eventually deploy the code to staging. And now we see the rollout start, and this time it's successful. Just to be sure, we can check the rollout details and see that both the deployment and verification jobs are successful this time. With everything working now, we need to promote this release to production. Recall from the configuration that production requires an approval to allow for manual inspection of the release by a user with the appropriate permissions. So now we'll go into the approval page and look at the release being suggested. Here we can look at the details of the release, including the images that are associated with the release being proposed. To inspect the image, we can look at it further in Artifact Registry. There, we can see the results of the vulnerability scan that was performed automatically on upload and make an informed choice about deploying that image. We can also inspect the build provenance to understand how that image was created. With that information in hand, we decide to approve the deployment. Now we can see our approved rollout deploying to production. First the deployment job passes, followed by the verification job. We have now successfully completed making our change, 
from commit all the way through production deployment. We've now shown a simple pipeline that allows you to iterate quickly without compromising on security. Some ways we've helped keep our pipeline secure is by having Cloud Build automatically provide build provenance information, using artifact registries built in vulnerability scanning, depending on Cloud Deploy to provide process control to the delivery, leveraging Cloud Run's integration with binary authorization, and though it wasn't stated explicitly, all interactions between these systems were controlled via IAM policies. Going forward, one possible next step would be to scale this configuration by leveraging Terraform support. Thank you, everyone, and back to you, David. Thanks, Edward. I want to close with a few pointers. First, if you'd like to get started with any of the products we talked about today, I'd encourage you to check out some great quick starts available at cloud.google.com. If you'd like to dive deeper into securing your software supply chain, we have you covered there, too. We've built up a rich set of resources describing industry best practices and standards, including Salsa. And finally, there's plenty more to learn here at Next. In particular, we have sessions that cover security in more detail, as well as developer productivity and how to build modern but simple applications. Whether you're at the beginning of your modernization journey or are well underway, I hope you'll consider what we talked about today. You may even consider new ways of tackling the challenges we described. Edward and I would like to thank you for joining today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of Next 22.